Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well. As I'm sure you can tell from the title of this video, this is going to be an art supplies haul. I've been gradually acquiring a few interesting bits and bobs over the past couple of weeks, either for particular projects that I want to work on or just random things that I've come across that I decided to get and I figured I would share with you. I know you guys really enjoy these videos and I also really enjoy watching art supplies hauls, so I completely get it, but it is really the one time that I get to talk about a variety of products and just share the interesting discoveries that I have made online, of course, in this case, because who leaves the house anymore? But now that I've, of course, rambled on forever in this intro, let's actually get on to talking about the supplies themselves. Let's actually start with art books, because when I do a haul and have art books included in it, I tend to leave those for last, so let's switch things up a bit. The first book that I have is actually the one I think that I've had the longest, and it is The Art of Raya and the Last Dragon. Now, this is, of course, the art book for the latest animated Disney film, and I knew, like, 20 minutes into the movie that I was absolutely going to have to add this book into my collection. The art style and concept for this movie is very much up my artistic alley. I love the concept of the different regions, it's very Last Airbender-like, and of course there's dragons. Who doesn't love dragons? <laughs> it is a beautifully laid out book that gives you a great look at a ton of detail that went into everything. There's literally like the fabric patterning that they created for the different regions. So if you like the movie, then I would highly recommend the art book. Somewhat along the lines of that one in the sense that it is an art book for a piece of media is The Art of Ghost of Tsushima. This is of course an art book all about the video game, which is one of my new favorite games. It's absolutely gorgeous to play through and look at. Like, gorgeous to the point that even if you have never played the game once, I think you would enjoy looking through this art book. So if you don't know, the game is like a historical samurai type of game, and this art book is very thematic in the entire concept, which is really cool. The book itself has this outer hard casing, but then the book itself has this really cool spine that is like a stitch that looks like just perfect for the entire concept of this game and art book. And then of course the art inside is absolutely gorgeous. There is tons of landscape painting of the different landscapes in the game, which are absolutely beautiful. It has all of the different armor that the warriors have, all of the different sword configurations and details that you can play with. They even have woodblock like prints in here of the different locations. It's just so my thing. Yeah, look, beautiful brush illustrations of the different graphics used in the game. This, this entire concept of this game just really appeals to my artistic interests. And of course, this art book was not going to disappoint. So again, it's one of those things, if you really like the piece of media, then I would highly recommend the art book. Or even if you're into historical Japanese artwork and architecture and stuff, I think you would really be into this book. One of the most recent videos that I had just made was going through my top 10 art books and when I was making that video I actually researched or at least looked up to see if some of the art books were still available because honestly I had no idea. But of course when I was doing that I came across a few that I didn't have and decided I needed apparently. The first one is just called The Art Book. It is an art history type book, which if you've seen my top 10 art books video, you'll know I love a good art history book. Yeah, this one is very much a timeline based book that goes through the world's history from a lot of different cultures and decades and art movements. Yeah, it's just one of those nice flip through books that I can't wait to sit down and read some afternoon because there's always some interesting tidbits in these kinds of books. And the last new art book that I have is called called Women in Art, which I think was one that was directly like recommended under that one because I never would have found this otherwise. As the name would suggest, this book is about 50 women in art throughout history, which one of the cool things is that not everyone is like a painter. There are some architects in here, photographers, sculptors, I believe. It is, first of all, beautifully illustrated. Every artist has an illustration and a one-page bio going over what kind of art artist they were and just general history about their work. So this might be a bit young or grade schooly for some people, but if you have someone that's younger, I think this would be a great book. But now let's get into some actual art supplies. The first thing which is definitely one of the most exciting things in front of me that I cannot wait to break into and start playing around with is this Dr. P. H. Martin's ink set. This is the Bombay India ink. I know Dr. P. H. Martin's makes a variety of different ink types, but I really just wanted to get an ink set of a variety of colors and I wasn't too particular about the type of ink. India ink works great for my general purposes though because it tends to be water resistant proof so if I ever want to use any of these 
with some watercolor that's not gonna be a problem with smudging or anything but I actually decided to go with set two and I was researching a bunch of swatches and I just thought this like a slightly off kilter rainbow that we have going on here just the yellow orange red magenta purple greens and blues just suited my uh, color interests better. It wasn't just so like Roy G. Biv, like, you know, you've got your standard yellow, red, orange, green, blue, violet. This was just a little off, but the colors just really appealed to me more in this set. So there is golden yellow, orange, tangerine, crimson, cherry red, red violet, aqua, turquoise, yellow ochre, terracotta, van dyke brown, and sepia. So no black or white, which is really not a problem. I have a lot of different black and white inks in my collection. Like I said, I was going for a more rainbow variety of colors than I have in my collection. It's very boring, basic, bland. The most exciting color I probably have in there right now is some shade of blue. So yeah, I can't wait to break into these and play around with them and hopefully create some really interesting ink drawings. Sort of along the lines of that is I also decided to pick up the Bombay pen cleaner. The pen cleaner that I did have, I like completely dried out or just evaporated into non-existence. I decided I would just pick up a bottle of this stuff and try it out and see if it's any better than my current just use hand sanitizer method, which does work. I'm not sure how great it is for the nibs and stuff, but it does work generally. Another product that I am really excited to test out and just break into and play around with are these brushes. But these are the Polina Bright synthetic brushes. I decided to just buy the entire set because I have been looking at these brushes for months. They're just very interesting looking and just looks like something that I would really enjoy using. They are essentially quill brushes, but they are not in the same shape as a quill brush. I know it's in its packaging and everything, but this is like one of my other quill brushes and you can just tell that the bristles themselves are just completely cut differently. So I'm very interested in trying these out. They are like an indie brand made brush. It is an artist that makes her own art supplies, which I am totally here for. Actually, if you have any favorite products from artist owned brands or just generally artist owned brands that you really love, please let me know what those are in the comments because I would love to check their products out. Also along the brush lines of things are these. Yeah, this is just a set of really cheap oil painting brushes, which I'm sure you might be thinking, why on earth would you need oil paint brushes? To which I would reply, exactly, except we've apparently reached that point in fourth lockdown, fifth lockdown, whatever lockdown it is at this point, that I've decided is a great idea to try oil painting for the first time, finally. Which yes, don't worry, I'm going to make an entire video on it because why on earth would you do something for the first time if you can't make a fool of yourself on camera? But to that end, I decided that I needed to pick up a few things. I think I have a total of maybe four specific oil paint brushes, which I know you don't really need, but these ones are just far more stiff than any other brush that I might have or use specifically more for oil painting, just so that I don't like mix anything weird or like possibly destroy a brush that I like for something else. So I decided to pick up this really cheap set, which honestly I don't have extensively high hopes for, but seeing as this is like a test first time sort of idea, I figured we would start here. So along the same lines of the brushes in the oil painting materials and accessories need that I all of a sudden have is just some refined linseed oil. Again, another one of those staple oil painting things that I just pretty sure I don't have any of this. If I do, I couldn't find it. When I committed to doing this, I basically looked in my oil painting section, which is really just the paints that I've had for too many years than we're going to talk about it at this point, and a few brushes, and I think that was basically it. I do have Turpinoid, whether I bought that specifically to oil paint when I bought the paints, uh, or just generally as a multi-purpose studio thing, have that, although I did also order some other stuff which hasn't come yet and I just couldn't be bothered to wait for it to film this video. And linseed oil is just one of those basic necessities that you need and if I have any I have no clue where it is, so I picked up a bottle of that. Since we're on the topic of my oil painting material purchase, I guess I will just talk about the other things that aren't here yet. I decided to buy some Gamsol. Like I said, I know I have the Turpinoid, but I use that for a bunch of other things and I figured I would just pick up some Gamsol to try out as well. That is sort of the alternative that you use instead of water with oil painting. And I also decided to pick up some canvas pads in a particular type. From my extensively low-key research that I did just overall for oil painting to make sure that, you know, I had my basics down pat, I of course came across the general concept that if you are someone that is most likely going to be painting portraits, 
you're probably going to want a more refined canvas texture or like just straight up linen, which I don't have high hopes for like my first test. So I decided to buy a couple sizes of this particular canvas pad that I completely forget what it's called. So I'm sure I will have that all up on the screen now, uh, but it is supposed to be a finer canvas weave than a lot of other canvas pads. And again, pretty inexpensive. So I'm not gonna feel like terrible for possibly wasting one of those sheets yeah, I'm excited for that to come in so that I can start on my oil painting journey. <laughs> the last few things are also very project specific related and they're kind of random, but I actually think that might be why they're interesting because I didn't really know any of these existed. The first thing is a silicone mold making kit, which I'm sure quite self-explanatory, but it is basically a two part resin system, except it is liquid silicone. Yeah, this is basically to create your own custom silicone mold. So I am going to be using it to prototype some products, test it out, possibly use it for product manufacturing in the future. Yeah, I'm really excited to play around with that and hopefully have it turn out well. Something that is resin and product manufacturing related, and this is technically not even an art supply at all, but I've already used these and I am obsessed with them, so I just had to slip them in here to mention them because they are so useful and amazing. It is these. Now I know this is a pack of a lot of not interesting, but this is a pack of silicone glass bands and also these little tip things uh, for like I mentioned, your glasses. Now what I use these for and why I decided to buy them is because when I am resining palette lids or just using resin or doing pore painting of any kind, of course your hands are covered in gloves generally and are absolutely filthy. And of course I am aware of the spectacles and these spectacles like to start slipping down my face or just generally moving around on my face. And I want to, you know, naturally poke them back up on my face to where I like them being and my hands are filthy. So I actually have resin, unfortunately, like permanently on one of the upper corners of these glasses from some time that I just wasn't quite as careful as I thought I was being with my resiny hands. And so I decided to finally pick up some of these. So I did originally try out using the straps themselves, which made me feel a little too much like I was wearing old aviation goggles. So I decided to flip to trying out the tips and these work absolutely amazingly. Yeah, these clearly do not look like much, but what you just do to these, which of course I really, I am so blind, I can't even see if, if this isn't in focus, I'm just gonna do it again. But what these do is you just put the ends of them, there's like little holes, you just put it around the arm of the glasses and you can move it around and make it looser or tighter depending on what you need. And it basically just creates like a nice little flexible hook that keeps these really securely on your face and on your ears and they're amazing. Kind of boring but so incredibly useful if you wear glasses and you run into this issue. I'm probably going to have these tips various places around my work stations. I have them like literally sitting on my wall in front of where I'm constantly working. So anytime I'm doing resin or pore painting and want to slip these on, I can. Kind of off topic and a little unexciting, but I think if you wear glasses and have run into this issue before, you will absolutely love those and your life will be changed forever. And the last thing is this. Yes, wow, so exciting, a bag of white powder. But wait, I'm gonna grab my UV flashlight and not look at it for safety reasons and just shine it on this thing for not too long, probably considering just how bright this flashlight is. Oh, and there you go. Of course, studio lights and everything are probably not going to have this show up well, but I think you can see, oh yes, all of a sudden it is not just a boring bag of white powder. This is a bag of glow-in-the-dark UV powder that I am sure I'm going to insert a clip here so that you can see it in its full brilliant blue state. But I just really want to play around with this stuff, not only in possibly some resin, but I think I'm going to try mixing this in on some different palette lids and see how that turns out. Make some like really cool Tron aesthetic looking ones. I don't know. I think it could be cool. So I'm very excited to play around with that and see what I can create with it. I originally was looking at glow in the dark paint, but there's a lot of hit or miss reviews with it. And this stuff had amazing reviews. So I decided to try this first 
first and see what it was like. It just seems like it's going to be a much more concentrated amount, so hopefully it will show up well and look interesting. It's also available in a ton of different colors, so if I like it, I think it works well. You guys are really into the concept of glow-in-the-dark or UV glow palettes. I can buy it in a bunch of different colors. I decided to start out with Natural Aqua, which is this really nice turquoise blue color because, again, it just sort of interested me the most, that sort of Tron aesthetic. Uh, but yeah, definitely there's a bunch of interesting colors that I would be very interested in trying out and mixing into different palettes to see what it ended up looking like. And that is all of the art supplies that I've picked up recently. I'm sure a lot of these products are going to be featured in upcoming videos, so if you are interested in seeing more of how things actually worked turned out and more of, a, I guess, in-depth review on those, that will definitely be coming up in the future. Yeah, that is everything. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video.